Hello, we're going to continue now with energy balances, but first we have to understand some basic concepts about energy. The first is the concept of systems. And a system is a quantity of matter or region in a space where a process that we're going to study has to occur. And it has a surrounding. So mass or region that is outside the system is all the surroundings and it is divided by the boundary. So this is a real or imaginary surface that separates the system from its surroundings. It could be fixed or it could be movable, it could move. There are types of systems. Closed systems are controlled and fixed amount of mass. Energy may cross the boundaries. So no crossing of mass, energy might cross. If it does not cl cross, energy is not crossing, then it is an, a special case called isolated system. And here you have this uh, fixed boundary, but you have this moving boundary in this closed system. And in open system is uh, when you control volume and the mass and energy is flowing. So here you have a nozzle, which is a system where uh, mass is centering and going out, or in this piston, you also have this energy that is, uh, this mass that is entering. The properties of a system is any characteristic of the system that is defined by the fundamental or secondary dimensions. It could be mass, volume, temperature, pressure, density. There are the intensive properties which are independent of mass. Temperature, pressure, and density are examples. The extensive properties depend on mass, on in extension mass itself, volume, energy are extensive properties. Because if you divide the system in two, then the temperature, the pressure, the density is not varying, but the mass and the volume is going to divide. If you uh, have an extensive property per unit mass, then that's a specific property and it's denoted by a caret or a lower case in, the, in our readings. For instance, the specific volume is the volume over mass. And a state is a condition that is totally described by the properties of the system. The values are fixed, so a change in any property will result a change in state. If you change, let's say, the volume, then the, the state is different. Steady state is when the properties do not vary. Flows are constant and there are no accumulation in the system. And then a steady or, or transient state, the system varies in properties, there is accumulation, etc. The state of a simple compressible system is completely described by two independent intensive properties. That's the state postulate. Simple compressible system is when you have absence of electrical, magnetic, gravitational motion, surface tension effects. Most likely we're going to be working with, with this. Um, systems, so two independent intensive properties can actually define the state of this system. So the equilibrium state uh, is the state of balance where there are no unbalanced potentials or driving forces within the system. Thermal equilibrium is when you have the same temperature, no heat flow. Mechanical equilibrium, no pressure differential. Phase equilibrium, the system involves two or more phases and each one stays. The chemical equilibrium is when there are no chemical reactions. The zero law of thermodynamics states that two bodies are in the thermal equilibrium if they have the same temperature. Is equivalent as for stating that a body is in mechanical equilibrium when there, there is no force applied, which means that there, if there is no driving force, there is in general no change. So it will reach thermal equilibrium when the temperature is exactly the same. And the absolute zero, which is not the same, is when the state of matter suggested as the absolute zero is the state where there is no disorder or motions in the molecules. The minimum temperature to be reached is zero Kelvin or zero, zero ranking, which is equivalent to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Absolute zero cannot be reached using only thermodynamic means. You need other uh, like quantum mechanic means, etc. A process is when you are changing the system 
through a series of states, you have an initial state, and then it will have a final state, and that is a process. It will follow a process path, a series of states through which the system passes during that process. And a cycle is when the process path is going to be closed, and the initial and final state is going to be exactly the same. A steady flow process is a process during which a fluid flows through a control volume without changing in time. Volume, mass, and energy content remain constant. There are what we call the pointer state functions. They only depend on the state of the system, not on the path of the system they took to reach the state. They have exact differentials. The difference of volume, the difference in pressure, difference in temperature, the difference in context of energy, like potential or kinetic energy, are point or state functions. Path functions depend on the path the system took in order to go from one state to another. If you take another path, then the path function will be different. They have inexact differentials like heat and work. If we have this process where you start in, in point one, and you go through process A or through process B, the difference in, in, in volume is exactly the same, three cubic meters. But then the work, which is the integral, which is the area below, below the curve, this area below the curve is different, is less than this area below the curve. So in this case, you can see that point and path functions are totally different. Once again, in point functions, you only look for final and initial state, the difference. And when you have a path function, it does depend on which uh, path is going to be taking. So this is everything I have to say right now about these basic concepts. In the next video, we're going to be introducing the energies and the energy balance. Thank you very much.